Well, hi, my name is Mark, and here we are in a beautiful high mountain lake in Colorado on the backside of Pikes Peak. And uh, we're enjoying trout fishing. And I'd like to show you a couple of concepts about how to transition from spinning fishing into bubble bugging. If you see this spinning rod, as you notice, it's a standard open face spinning reel. But on the end, we have something a little different. We have a bubble system. This is a bubble you can get at most Walmarts or fly stores, fishing stores. And if you look closely, that bubble has water in it. The water allows you to cast this line out in a distance of oh, maybe 25, 30 yards where the fish are. The trick, however, is we use tippet material. Tippet material is uh, generally made of floral carbon. It's invisible, and you actually tie it onto the back side of the bubble. As you follow down, you can see here's the fly. I actually have two flies on here right now. We'll talk about what flies to use in a second. I'm actually using two flies. I recommend for the novice just to try one because it's easy to tangle, but you get the hang of it. Typically, you want to have about three to four foot of line between the bubble and the fly, and the tippet material you buy in a little spool. I'll show you what it looks like. You can get this at most fly stores. This is 3.7 pound test floral carbon, but it's very strong. Probably as strong as eight pound test. The cool thing about uh, tippet material is invisible. I've used a 100 pound test tippet in Northern Pike in Canada, and believe it or not, you can't even see a 100 pound test when a fish is coming in on the little hook. But, uh, so you want to use your tippet material to not spook the trout. And then, of course, the diameter is thinner as well, so it's very thin diameter, so the fish don't see it. So here we have the bubble bugging. When you cast it, you just sort of have to lob it out there and try not to get your uh, fly hooked on the ground on the back side. So just kind of lob it out there. And then you just reel and reel steady and watch that last fly because you'll see a splash. That's sort of the same way as fly fishing with a fly rod. A fly rod, and we won't talk about fly casting today, but at the end of the fly rod, you'll see the same kind of thing, monof or a fluorocarbon leader with the flies on it. I'm using three flies right now on this fly rod. And it's all floral carbon tippet material. We tie then after a tapered leader. We can talk more about that in another video. But here we have three flies on the tippet. And uh, about a foot and a half apart each fly. I've caught fish on each of these flies today. Uh, periodically we catch two fish at once. But today I haven't done that. Let's talk about the flies for a second. In Colorado, in most western states, and even Pennsylvania and eastern rivers, there's only three or four different real insect groups that you can categorize. Of course, trout love hoppers, and they love ants, and they love mayflies, and they love caddisflies. So most of the, most of the insects are going to fall into that group. Let's look at the fly rod that I'm using here. This top fly is a hopper. In Colorado, most of the hoppers have a yellow belly. And I don't go too big of a hopper. They don't tend to want the real large ones. This is a little, sort of an average small size. It's tied with deer hair. They've got nice little feet on it. This was actually tied from different fabrics and fiber and was designed by Dave. And as you can see, I've got it tied on the front and then the second fly is tied to the hook. Typical clinch knot, that's all you need to know. You can put some fly float on the top of it so that floats a little better. You got fly float like this product, Gink is what I use. It's sort of a white kind of a cream that goes on the fly float on the fly and it floats it so you can see the fish hit. When you use a hopper dropper system like I have here, actually the second one is sort of a hopper pattern too, when you use a hopper dropper system, let's set this reel down for a second. When you use the hopper dropper system, you want to watch the top fly to see a splash, which this floats. This is actually a, an Amy's ant in a purple color. It's an ant and a hopper combination. So it's a double attractor, right? The lower fly is a larva of a dragonfly. 
Uh, it's probably, a, it's actually a damselfly larva. Damsels are little blue dragonflies, which trout love the damselflies. This is the water aquatic version of it. Before it gets its wings, you can see the little uh, emerging wing uh, area there. They'll climb up on a weed, the wings will pop out, and they'll fly away. But before they get to the weeds, they swim around underneath the water and try to get up on something, and that's what the trout usually feed on them, just below the surface. They call it the film. And uh, so that's the aquatic version or the larval, larval version uh, of a damselfly. We're catching most of our fish on that today. But the hopper dropper is nice because the hopper stimulates their interest. They see that first, they say, I'm not sure I want that, but then they're in the area to see this fly and they usually take the lower fly. Although once in a while they'll take the hopper. So that's called the hopper dropper system. And uh, you can use it for either bubble bugging or for uh, fly fishing. So that's the... Uh, that's a little video tutorial for today. Uh, tune in for more. Uh, we'll be talking more about fly casting, talking more about presentation, how to actually, uh, what to look for in the water to find the fish, and uh, then also how to land a fish. And so, uh, once again, this is Mark with uh, Colorado uh, Fly Fishing. Uh, we're going to be putting out more videos here for our Fishing America's Mountain, uh, Pikes Peak region, and I uh, look forward to seeing you in our next video. Take care.